Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Scheel and I'm Vice Chair of Confers, a DARPA-funded industry consortium looking to establish best practices for satellite servicing and RPOD, or Rendezvous Proximity Operations and Docking. I'm also co-founder and chief development officer of OrbitFab, a company working to supply a network of propellants on orbit. We have the first commercially available fueling port on sale, and we also have contracts with the Air Force, National Science Foundation, and we've had contracts with NASA and the ISS National Lab, where we became the first private company to resupply the ISS with water using our propellant feed systems. In addition, we have contracts with commercial companies across the globe, including US, Japan, and Europe. So why are standards important? So generally agreed upon standards are the bedrock of a healthy global economy. You can look at any industry like automotive, aviation, and shipping to see the economic value that they have generated. And this is generally because they reduce the friction in the market. Our example is transaction costs. Once you remove this friction, you will see a drastic increase in activity and transfer of goods and services. And when you have good standards in place, companies can build uh, can build on that prevailing level of infrastructure. Look at Amazon, for instance. If you didn't have good standards for, for shipping or barcodes or a variety of things, Amazon would not exist as we know it today because they would be having to establish all of those areas themselves. And the space industry is no different. If we have, we have standards already, for launch, for how you design spacecraft, and everything else. However, on-orbit servicing is such a new market that there are very few standards that pertain to it. And this is a good thing for right now. If you have too many standards early on, you can actually inhibit the growth of the market. And now with the successful docking of the MEV, the on-orbit servicing market is finally getting its legs. And finally, in order, in order to establish a healthy market long-term, it's important that the government doesn't impose standards early on. Now today, I wanna to go over a few standards which I think are very important. And those would be RPOD, or Rendezvous Proximity Operations and Docking. You have satellite refueling. You have docking fixtures, power and data connectors, and space situational awareness. Now, this is not representative of all areas, but a few of which I believe are important. And the key really is to start flying these technologies as soon as possible and to take a little bit more risk for the long-term gain. So rendezvous proximity operations is important because it is what allows two satellites to dock together. And an interface important is and an interface standard is equally important because it allows these satellites to communicate with one another. It also reduces the burden for other companies to offer services and to grow that market um, moving forward. So some standards, for example, you could have um, how you do the RPOD. So stop off distances for commu uh, to communicate, making sure you're going to the right spacecraft making sure that it's, um, it's consensual and that there's no bad actors moving closer to the spacecraft. You also, uh, also uh, want to make sure that when you're going to deorbit a spacecraft, that the spacecraft is not tumbling, that you're going to have a safe and successful docking each time. Now looking at standards for demonstration, you might want to look uh, for example, doing your demonstration mission in LEO under 350 kilometers. So should there be an accident, you won't have a lasting effect in the LEO environment. Or if you're in the GEO environment, having your demonstration being done in the, the GEO graveyard. Now Northrop Grumman and Space Logistics did this with the MEV-1. When they docked to the Intel sat satellite, they did it in the GEO graveyard. So now with the successful completion of their demo mission, their MEV-2 will actually be docking with the client satellite in the geo orbit while it's still operating it, uh, for its customers. 
Now, the other big drivers, there's no current standardized set of sensors or algorithms um, for the industry. Now, um, this is important that moving forward, we have an industry, uh, an industry RPOD kit, if you will, uh, that we can give to customers to make sure that they are cooperative clients. Um, it's much easier to do a cooperative docking versus an uncooperative docking where only one side has the RPOD functions. So having a standard around that will make it easier for widespread adoption later on for services. Now you have refueling standards. So currently there are two refueling valves on the market. You have the NASA uh, Goddard Space Flight Center cooperative service valve, and then you have the OrbitFab rapidly attachable fluid transfer interface. Now both of these are good options, um, but the real key is to start flying the service valves as soon as possible. Because the first refueling is not going to be for a few years, but if you wait a few years to start adding these onto your spacecraft, you're just kicking the can down the road for when services will actually be available. Now you have docking fixtures. So you come, so this is important as there are already demonstrations in the work. So you have DARPA's RSGS uh, and NASA's Restore L, or now OSAM 1, where they are working with robotic, complex robotic arms to grapple and fix satellites in orbit. Now you also have less invasive options like the Altius and Astroscale docking plates um, that allow for your spacecraft to be de uh, deorbited. Now standards like these are low impact on customers. Uh, they give you fiducials, which will help uh, facilitate the docking. Um, and, and these are great options to start building standards around. You also have power data connection. Uh, these are equally important. You know, what kind of power, what, what kind of um, power or bus are you going to? Is it 28 volt? Um, is it CAN? A lot of these standards will make it easier to develop new pieces of hardware um, that can innovate, but still be used broadly throughout the on-orbit servicing community. Now you have a lot of international governments involved. You have NASA with the OSAM office or on-orbit servicing assembly manufacturing. Um, you have JAXA with the Do Orbit Initiative, uh, heavily investing in Astroscale to make this a reality. And then you also have ESA with the Clean Space Initiative, looking to also clean up debris, making those docking plates uh, standards much more important, especially as we get into the larger constellations. Now, there are two industry bodies working towards um, best practices and standards. As mentioned earlier, you have the execution of rendezvous and servicing operations, or CONFERS, and then you have the European Operations Framework, or the EOF. Now, when you have these industry bodies, it's important that they aren't siloed or view it as a competition. The last thing you want is standards, different standards in different countries, uh, especially with such a small market like the on-orbit servicing uh, industry. Global standards are critical to have the healthy growth of the market that we all want to see. And these two organizations have already been talking with one another. Uh, which is a great sign. Now, there are different ways that you can set standards. You have the individual governments set the standards. You have a global body that sets the standard. Or you have the market that sets the standard. So some of the pros of having the individual government setting the standards is you have easy adoption in the host country. You know, defense or civil agencies are the most likely uh, the ones to be setting that standard and therefore they're most they will be using it and they will most likely take commercial services to use it uh, and you have less competition in the market making quicker adoption in the commercial industry now some of the cons you know the standard might stunt the growth of the in, of the commercial industry as it's uh, it's not as good for um, innovation you know it stifles the innovation um, you have potential resistance from commercial companies because it might not take into account the correct 
requirements, um, or it might not be cost sensitive um, to smaller commercial companies. Now you have the uh, global body setting the standards, like ISO, for instance. Um, and internationally set standards um, could make it easier to do business with other countries. Uh, this is because we're all working under one standard, um, you know, broadening uh, the commercial market's opportunity. Uh, and, and the uh, government body can also take into account uh, requirements from commercial companies. However, uh, these typically take a long time to agree upon as you're dealing with multiple governments and multiple different interests. Um, and also, in order to be influential on a global scale, you typically, you typically need large-scale economic incentives tied to that standard. A good example of this is the, in, uh, the infrastructure uh, investment assistance that was done to help drive the shipping container standard uh, as that was uh, to be adopted around the world. Uh, and because the space industry, especially um, on orbit servicing, there's not a lot of government infrastructure investments, um, such as large scale projects like the International Space Station um, or large government constellations. Uh, once you have that um, increased infrastructure spending, um, this might be a good option. And then finally, you have the market sets the standards. Um, the commercial requirements are definitely taken into account. Um, you can also get that rapid innovation, right? Because everyone's trying to make the best product at the lowest cost. Uh, global adoption is possible because you can sell across borders uh, and it's easier to adapt in other countries. Now, some of the cons though, it's slower to lock in that standard because you have that rapid innovation um, you're going to keep getting better and better products. Um, and it's harder to get government buy-in because you have to make sure that you're doing all of the, the correct processes for the government, which could be costly and time consuming. Um, but, and it could also, um, and, and it doesn't take into account externalities like uh, economic downturns uh, where there's less investment into the commercial community, which could also slow down the growth. So it's really important as we move forward to understand what is the best way to set these standards. Uh, and it could be a combination. We could start off with you know, the market coming up with good products, setting baseline standards, and then having a global body come in uh, and then taking those uh, individual standards and grouping them together to create one global standard. So standards are, just a quick recap, you know, standards are important. Um, and, and it's increasingly important that we don't put unnecessary standards on uh, today or in the next few years, uh, letting the industry have a chance to innovate and grow naturally. Um, but, in, but moving forward, we know we want those standards you know, so we can do businesses across lines. Smaller companies don't have to you know, go find another rock to make sure that they're developing a good product and that we can grow this industry together. Thank you, and I look forward to taking your questions.